Hello, our lovely viewers, students across the country. Welcome to Joy Learning on the SHS. Uh, there is a revision show. I'm your facilitator, Sir Kwame Amwaten, taking you through one of the feared topics in integrated science. Many people are afraid of it. The topic is more concept. My job today is to simplify, make it easy for you to remember. Remember, it's the revision show. We believe maybe you've been taught along the way, you could have forgotten or you didn't grab it well. So we're going to all revise the key areas and step by step deal with how to answer questions in the exams hall. You know Joy also have a normal program or teaching programs. You can go there for the in-depth step-by-step also topic there where it's taking many, many weeks to treat the more concepts. But here is the revision show. If you are ready, go look for your pen. Also look for a calculator because things are going to be done in decimals. Then along the way, you can send your questions in so that we help you forgotten it. At the end of the lesson, as we've previously done some topics under matter, this also falls under matter. So this is the fit and set objective the syllabus expects you to know. At the end of the lesson, you, the student, will be able to perform calculations using the more concepts. Now put in the brackets things you should know. The mole, the molar mass, formula mass, the relation between gram and the mole. At the end, be able to prepare solutions of given concentration. Take a brief, take your paper, take your pen, and let's start the journey of mole concepts. I may surprise you not to teach the mole in the chemistry sense, but to simplify it so that I can remember. I believe probably you've been to a shopping mall or a store to buy something. There are many ways we just pay and they'll give you something. If you pay for iodated salt, you exchange money for something that is measured in grams or kilograms. If you buy a tin tomato, mostly we say the short one, the big one, the small one. To the scientists, they didn't do small one, big one, that. If you read on it, things measured in units. Every industry and the way they measure their units. So most units we know Common units we know is kilograms, or we buy things in grams. Sometimes to, you go to buy maybe a pound of something, meat, pound. You go to the poultry people, they may say they have their things in In the steel industry, in the Still industry and people who mostly export maybe farm produce, they would do they would take this in tons. So you see that every industry has the way they measure something. Let's particularly use the dozen or the crate system for our study. If a poultry farmer has maybe workers and he calls one of the workers and asks him. How many eggs did they lay today? Did the birds lay today? Is he going to stand there and say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and say that they laid about 670 eggs? How many eggs did they lay? What would the boy say? They would say, maybe 60 crates, 30 crates, 20 crates. 
So a crate may stand for 30 individual eggs. So with this, the farmer need not to ask how many individual things. Once in the industry of the farmers, they understand a crate carries 30. If you buy anything that is a dozen, we know it carries 12 individual things. So I can just go buy an, a dozen of an egg, a dozen of a book, a dozen of something. The dozen actually is not something in any industry. It's an English word measure for 12 things. So sometimes you go to buy a pen and they'll say a pen is a box. One box of a pen. I say 12, a, a dozen means 12 things. It can be shoes, it can be books, it can be pens, it can be egg, it can be anything. So if as the owner of the poultry farm wants to know things in dozens and ask the boys how many eggs did they lay, they can say we had 20 dozens. In that sense, the boy or the farmer need not to say that 12 times 20 is this. Just the unit is going to be here. It's going to be a dozen. I'm going to multiply it by 12 things. But to find the number, number of individual things in the dozen, let's use the word particles. If I said that how many eggs did they lay, and then I will just have to multiply 5 times 12, that is going to give me 60 eggs. If the boy also went to count it individually and said maybe there were 72 individual eggs, for the farmer to know it in dozens, he's going to have five dozens. Divide here by 12 and can get the dozens. So if I have dozens, how many am I going to get? That's going to be give me about six. A measure of unit. That makes sense to them. So usually I use 12 here because that is general. Everything can be a dozen. But the industry of poetry, they will say crate. That is their language. It's 30. So if I should ask them how many eggs did they lay and the boys say that there are three crates, then I'm going to multiply it by 30. I'm going to get 90 individual things. So the number of individual eggs is going to be three crates times 30 is going to give you 90 individual. Now 12 particles in a dozen. So you understand that any measure of Anything called a measure has particles that make up that unit of measure. Going forward, in the world of chemistry, they also have the same thing. So in the world of chemistry, like as we just did previously, we're also going to have a unit of measure. And the unit would have some individual Or individual items in it. To know the total number at a time, all that we do is that, like the dozen, we take it and we multiply it by something. The chemist in their language, because particles are so tiny that you can go sit down, can one after the other. They also have put it in, let's say, wrap it in packs. In packs, wrap it in, let's say, small packs. Each pack that makes one unit in that chemist world is what we say it contains 6.02 times 10 to the power 3 times 10 to the power 3. Let's compare it to what we just did. If you have 30 things in the 
area of the poetry, they will say a crate. If you say 12 things in the normal understanding of English measurement, a dozen. So 12 stands for a dozen, 30 stands for a crate. So due to that, once we know the particle makeup, you have to give a name for the unit. In the chemistry field, they call that name the amount of substance, usually we call it the mole. And then, so if I want to know the total number of particles in some water, what do you think are the number of molecules in water? Plenty. If you buy is it a, a, a bottle of water, how will you measure the molecules inside? Remember, one molecule of water, we just write it H2O. That is just one. How many of this will be in a bottle of water? So scientists, to do that, also have to wrap it in that form. And say, if I can get 6.02 times 10 to the power 23, stands for one mole. So if I say a water contains, let's say, 55 moles, then that whole letter, that whole letter can just multiply 6.02 times the 55 of it. So if I want to know, it's an assumption. Now I say total is 6.02 times 10 to the power 23, then I'm going to just multiply it. Before we go to the next stage, you are now getting it that there's a unit of measure in the whole world, in every industry. Once you know the unit of measure, it always comes with some quantity of individual items in it that made it. Maybe let's go back to our normal SIS book. You always know that when you count 20 papers, it makes one SIS book. So just one SIS book, you know the number of papers in it. One box of a, one box of a pen, we know is 50. So you say, how, if I have three boxes, how many pens will I get? 50, that's the Avogadro's number. And I say, I want to know the total number of it. So to get the total number, I just have to multiply one box that has 50, and there are three boxes, so I get 150. So just cast your mind to day-to-day -to -day activity, then just use the names in chemistry to just wrap it up. So as if you get the pen, relationship. Now let's go on. So we are going to define it. It stands for a mole. We don't care. It's like a dozen. A dozen of pen is not the same. It's 12 things, but it's not the same as a dozen of, let's say, shoes. All that we need is there's something there in 12. Here to whether it's atoms and it is 6.02 times 7 to the power of 3, it's the standard, it's like the 12. If you go to molecules and we can count 6.02 times 10 to the power 23, it's the same thing. If you go to formula units, which we'll look at, and you can count the same thing there. So like doesn't cut across everything. We don't change it. Same. We don't care the makeup of it. Once we have the 6.02 times 10 to the power 23, called Avogadro's constant, then it is one mole. So if there are two of the six point this times that I have two moles, if I if I have three of this times three moles times that we are going to get three moles. As we are doing this, we are treating the mole concept that you we are taught we are taught in form one or form two. So today's topic, don't think it's something in the market it's chemistry we are doing the mole concept so now you have this pretty idea let's zoom in to the original thing so in mole let me use a red pen here so we want the total number of something and the symbol for mole is n and avogadro's constant let me just write a for now and i've put the so to get the equation is going to be n, which is looking for the total number, then the mole, which is the unit of chemistry, as the amount of substance. 
which contains as many elementary particles as there in 12 grams of carbon 12 isotope. I would say it contains the basic elementary particles. That mole that we just looked at, or the one we looked at were in the idea of numbers. Or the one we did, because I said a crate contains 30, a dozen contains 12. So we can know a dozen by knowing the numbers. So in most two, we just can know the total number of something. Let's say a bottle of water. We can know the total number of molecules there. If only I give you the number of moles, you know what to multiply with. We can also measure it in mass. We will get there too. So the Avogadro's constant, which is a, we mostly refer to as capital N with a small subscript A or usually the L. We say that it is the number I was talking about. Like the way I say dozen means 12, the word 12, and dozen is the unit. So here too, the mole is the unit. Then the Avogadro, which is 6.02 times 10 to the power 23, is also the number. But we have a name for it called Avogadro's constant. After the man knows Amido Avogadro. And this is what it means. Once I have one mole of something, it contains it. So if I have two moles of something, I have twice of that. It's like saying you have two dozens, means that you have twice of that. How do you relate all this? Remember that I just wrote somewhere that we had an n is equal to a small n times the individual particles, which was Avogadro, now we say L. So to get, like the farmer, if the farmer was not told the crates, but he was given the total numbers, let's say 90x, and he wants to know the crates in it, it's just going to take 90 divided by 30. So if I know the total number of particles in water, and I know each one mole has 6.02, that I will just divide, as we have here, big N, which is the total number of, the whole total number of particles in the water, all divided by 1. So I'll know the packs of 6.02, two like that, the number of packs there. I hope you are following. So this is how related, and these are the names. Another way we can also explain it is, let's say I tell you that this pen has a, a gram of five one pen every one pen here has a gram of five and that is in mass and all of a sudden i tell you that i bring you a box i didn't tell the number of pens inside then i said that they are it's a 30 gram it's weighing 30 gram it's weighing just there but one is five so what do you think you do to get the number of pens in without opening the box. Surely, in terms of masses, once I have told that one is that amount, then 30 will be divided by 5 to give you the total number of pens there. So you see that I can arrive at knowing the, knowing the number of things that makes up the units. Again, I can arrive at like what we did in the crates. So if the crates were 30 to that but we know the weight of one crate let's say one crate is 10 uh, grams and i come to tell you that there are 50 all that i brought is 50 grams all that i do is that you divide 50 by 10 and you know the number of crates i got so i could get the crates from what knowing the individual eggs there or i could get the crates by knowing the weight so knowing the weight itself is the mass approach so let's look at some examples. Now, you are supposed to also know that this entity that we call the 6.02 times 10 to the power 23, I said that you wrap it, you wrap it, you wrap it. 
we don't care whether it's your shoes that are 12. We don't care whether, let's say this pen. If I should remove the ink in it and put it down, I have 12 of them. It is a dozen. We don't care what it is. But this same pen can be in this, and this also will be a bigger structure with. When I have 12 to, it is a dozen. Because they are a unit. This one makes up that. So let's take the pen to be the atom. So if I ask you, find the, if there are 12 of them, find a dozen of ink there is 12. If I find a dozen of pen, it's also 12. I hope you'll be getting confused by now. But let's take it one after the other. Once I said that you can count something 6.02 times 10 to the power 20, that's Avogadro's number. Comparing to the dozen, once you have 12 shirts, it's a dozen. 12 shoes, it's a dozen. 12 books, it's a dozen. Here to 12, uh, 6 point something, we can count atoms of it. It's a mole. If it's in molecule forms, where two atoms have joined together chemically, and as you count one, and they're also together, and you count 12, it's a mole. If there are ions that have separated in an aqueous solution, you can get cation and anions. Each individual there working on its own. Once you can count 12 cations, it's a mole. 12 anions is on its own. Sorry, I said 12. 6.02 times 10 to the part is a mole. If I get the same for cation, it's a mole. Mostly, when we put ions together, or molecule uh, compounds that are formed from ions, we mostly call the formula unit. So below you see sodium chloride and calcium carbonate. If you go to the exams and they say find the number of moles of the formula unit, we use formula units only for compounds that are made up of metals and non-metals. But usually if they are non-metals solely, non-metals solely as covalent bond, uh, compounds, we don't use the word formula units. Each of them, once you can count 6.02, is a mole. Now let's take some examples on your screen, how to calculate it in the chemistry world. Now calculate the number of atoms, molecules, in, now I'm going to say in, if I've said three dozens, you know what to multiply. Three crates, you know what to multiply. So whatever first number they give in front of the mole is the quantity of the mole. Then you multiply by the number of one mole. So they are saying that calculate the number of atoms, number of molecules in 0 0.25 moles of carbon dioxide gas. Let's look at what's on your screen. We know that the quantity of a mole, every one mole, that is an N, is equal to That's the meaning. So if I tell you that I have three of that, it's going to multiply by three. But if I say I have less of that, still whatever less, you multiply by the number. So what we have on your screen is that atoms makes up the molecules here. So how many individual atoms were there? It's a one molecule, but atoms came together to make it. If I've just put carbon solely there, carbon solely, without combining it, then you could have gone straight to work with carbon. But this one, it's in a compound form. But I want the individual element there or atoms, because atoms make up elements. Let's count it. Carbon is one. There's oxygen should have been another element, but there are two oxygen. So in all, there is one plus two going to give us three. So because three things come together to form one molecule of carbon dioxide, this three is in the atom form, is put together and multiplied by the 6.02 times 10 to the power and the moles. So I'm going to underline the last line where the trick is. And this three stands for the number of carbon dioxide atoms in there. 
So if you multiply with your calculator, you are going to get the answer of 4.515 times 10 to the power 23. Here to note, in this chemistry mode calculation, we don't keep things in two digits. Let's say 10, 11, 12, 13. You know, everything should be kept in between 1 to less than 10. So if you multiply something it goes to 20, you have to put in a decimal form or the standard form. So a single figure point something times. So you need a little mass here. Let's go to the second question they asked. We should know the molecules. But here the carbon dioxide, the C and the O, which were atoms, have come to form one unique structure, one. So there's only one mole formed. If I've written 2CO2 in front, like this. If I've written it 2 like this, then that means this single thing has been made twice. But this is the case, it's only one. So once it's one mole, Remember, in the atom side, we counted the individual atoms. Each atom there, if there are uh, a, a mole there, each one is containing 6.0. So C is containing 6.02. O is containing 6.02. But O is twice. That's why in the atom sense, we say three. But now the molecule is one thin line that has a unique compound. For that one, because it's one, and we can count, it's a one, we only have 6.02 times in it. So we are going to multiply only one times 0 0.25 times 6.02. Then you, you say molecules per mole. In the other one, we said atoms. So when you finish the calculation, as opposed to first keep it in single decimal point, keep it also, you, you tell us whether it's molecule, it is ion, it is formula unit, it is uh, electrons, you need to do that. If you don't do it, uh, you get yourself into trouble. So I've put a note there. For the number of atoms, check the individual atoms. But for molecules, look for the coefficient of the said compound and include it in the calculation as we just did. Let's take another example. This is a little bit <laughs> complex. Calcium carbonate. Calculate the number. So when they say number of atoms, so number is this. If I've said find the mole, it's going to be the small n, big n over L. They won't tell you to find avogadros because usually we know that <laughs> it doesn't mean 12. You are not going to access how to find the 12. Because the number for the unit. So for atoms, how many elements do you see here? We have one, two, three. But the carbon is three times. So in all, what are we going? Let me write A, B, and C so that makes it easy. A, B, and C. We have A. A means one. B means two, C means the third element. But C alone has three of that. So in all, we are going to have five C elements from the periodic table, but atoms make up elements. So we say five atoms. So how do we work on it? So finding atoms, you count the individual element. So the formula is going to be five times N that's the mole times L. And they said each mole is a 0 0.36. Then you multiply by the 6.02 times 10 to the power 23. You are going to get your N. And your answer is 1.0836. You see it's become 24. It means that it was supposed to be 10.83. Original thing was 10.836 times 10 to the power 24. But we moved the decimal 
forward one step so that we can get us one point. That is why the 23 has become 24. If you want the molecules, since I didn't put anything in front of the molecule like this, there's nothing there, then it is assumed to be 1. Then you multiply with your moles and get your answer. Now let's look at the ion situation. If they tell you find the number of ions, now the word was number, so a unit times something. But the ions, how many ions will be here when you put it in water and they dissociate? They are going to get calcium as an ion and carbon dioxide, calcium, sorry, carbonate as an ion too. So if they are in the water, how many ions are there? Two different types of ion, and every ion will have its mole in the water. So because of that, it's going to be two times whatever formula, and we are good to go. I hope you are following. Now, we're moving or zooming to another area. Remember I told you that the farmer can decide to know the crate number by just knowing the individual eggs that were laid. Or can know the standard, assuming there was a standard for a crate weight, put it on a weighing scale, you know that it is these grams. Every egg crate will give you that, assuming. So if I do, every 30 gives me that. So if every 30 gives me that, I need not to know what is in the 30. Know just one of the mass. That's a 30 mass together. The 30x which gives me a mass. I come to tell you that there are, let's say 30x is equal to 10 grams. And I come to tell you that, boss, I will got 80 grams. So the farmer can just sit down and say 80 divided by 10 will give me 8. That means there are 8 crates. So the first one we are using numbers, now we are using the mass aspect. It's the same like having a shoe or a slipper. If you know the size of one slipper, sorry, the weight of one slipper, you have no problem. If you know the weight of one pen in a box of 50 pens, if one pen is 2 grams, and I tell you that the box I brought to you is 40 grams, you can know how many pens are there. That's all that they are doing. So apart from using the number approach, we can use the mass approach. If you cannot count individual things, we can use the mass approach. So in the mass approach, you are supposed to first know the molar mass. Let me simplify the molar mass for you. We say the mass of one mole of any chemical substance. It has the unit gram per mole. Before this, we have done relative atomic masses on the periodic table. So atomic masses, and we did relative atomic masses. Now you are supposed to also know molecular formula, which we did, and molecular mass. If I have a molecule with compounds together, let's say glucose, let me write C6H12O6. Let's also write water, H2O. Molecular formula will tell me the number of individual elements that are here. In water, there are two hydrogen and one oxygen. But I can also find its mass using the atomic masses on the periodic table. On the periodic table, hydrogen was one, but there are two hydrogens here. Then oxygen was 16. So if I don't want to know the number of things, and I said there's a compound that consists of two things plus another one, which give me 18, I can be even able to predict it. Same we can do it for the glucose. That was the molecular formula we did. So the molecular formula will give you the individual element in it. But the individual elements, atomic mass numbers, sorry, mass numbers,
if I put everybody's mass together, I get the molecular mass. If it's relative, means it's compared, there's no unit. If it is molecular mass itself, you have the U sign beside it. I'm doing that because we are going to connect it to the molar mass. So in the molar mass, we calculate as I have it there, MB. The molar mass is calculated by summing up the atomic masses of the compound given in the question. So the individual elements there, the atoms there, we sum it up. And because it's a molecule, we say it's a molecular mass. So the unit or the weight gotten as a result of weighing a compound is the molecular mass. In calculating it, and using it in the more concept, we have it as the molar mass. So this is something you are supposed to know in calculating the molar mass. So your screen is calculate the molar mass of sodium chloride, NaCl. So they've given you the individual atomic masses here. Your job is to pick them one after the other and add them and have the unit gram per mole. Then for, look at this one, there are one, two, three different atoms, but one of them is three times. So you are going to see that we have it this way. 40 for calcium, 12 for carbon, oxygen is 16, but three times of it, you get 100 gram per mole. If you don't want it, write a G stroke M, you can write a G mole minus one. The minus means over. This G moles that we stroke it actually means G like this. Let's take some calculations. The relation between mole and molar mass. We did the, the mole looking at it from the number approach where we use the Avogadro standard that we understood that every time we have a wrap in the chemistry world in terms of atom molecules then 6.0 that is the one standard for the measure unit of mode in the mass side you take the mass of the substance and divide it by molar mass for example as we said oxygen is 16 we all know oxygen is 16. if oxygen, one oxygen is 16 then all of a sudden an oxygen that was weighed that was weighed maybe is 32 grams then logically if they tell this oxygen we brought is 32 how many oxygens are in it it is just whatever they give divided by one and in the chemistry world one standard of something is a mole so in gram form if i give the total you divide by the individual of one if the individual of one has been put into a compound, then you calculate all the compound as one. Then whatever mass they gave you, you divide it by one, looking for how many of that compound is in one. Is in the how many one of that many times is in the large compound they gave to you. So let's start with the simple one. Calculate the amount of substance in nine grams of aluminium. 9 grams of aluminium. Then the molar mass, sorry, the atomic mass of on the periodic table is the 27. Since we are not going to do it in the molecular mass form, we assume this is your molecular mass too. Because it's a one compound we are looking at. So if they put it like that, use it. So G9 over 27 is going to be 9 divided by 27 is going to be 0 0.33 moles. You can punch it and see. So now you know this two approach. It means that we can find a mole.
the number approach can find in the mass approach and the mass is going to be the mass of substance over the molar mass so formula is going to be m over big m in the number approach we are going to find n is equal to So these are the two approaches we can use to find mole. Okay, I think you have exhausted a lot. Take your time and go over it before we go to the next stage, which is concentration. As I've bombarded with a lot, let's go for a break, go over what you've done so that we zoom into the next stage and do some application. My viewers, I hope you are enjoying it. We bombarded you and taken another approach of understanding this concept. We are going to the next stage we call the solution idea, which will lead us to con if the sugar mix with it and you can't find the sugar again, homogeneous mixture, then you are dealing with a solution. The meal, eh, sorry, the solute is the Solid substance mostly we put in the liquid that will dissolve. The solvent, usually the substance that dissolves the solute, mostly they are liquids. Other terms you are supposed to know is a standard solution and a buffer solution. A standard solution is a solution which contains known amount of solute in a given volume or weak base. I start with this because the amount of substance that you drop or you put in a solvent, the solute you put in a solvent, will determine the concentration level. It only works this way. We can only compare something that is dilute or concentrated when first the volume is known. So let's say you take a sachet of pure water, you tear it or cut the one side of it, pour it into a cup, and at one stage, you put 10 cubes of sugar into it. Let's say the same amount of water can be put in another cup, and that diluted solution. In both sides, you can decide to change it. If you are in the concentrated one, and you want to become dilute, there are two options. Either I add more water, or if you can dive into it and remove all the amount of sugar there, fine. But remember that the sugar has mixed with the water, so you can't do anything. But rather, you can add more water. So if there are more water per the solute, then it has moved from concentrated to dilute. Keep this one too, as we are going to apply all this. Now if something is concentrated or is in concentration, there are many ways to express the concentration. There are four ways per syllabus to express concentration of a solution. I've said that the amount of substance you drop, or solute you drop in a solvent, will determine your concentration. We can use the... That is a box. 
so we can drop if i put more cubes you will know that per that bottle there's too many cubes there the other bottle there's less there so definitely the one with more become concentrated the one with less become diluted now let's move to the chemistry world so the cube was the main measure okay in chemistry to the amount of soda we call the mole which contains 6.02 times if i have more moles put in one let's say sachet of water and i have another one i have less moles so if one has 10 moles that means i'm going to have 10 of 6.02 and one has four moles i'm going to have 6.02 Four of that so 10 is going to give me 60 4 is going to give me 24. definitely if i have 60 things dissolved in water it's going to be more concentrated than 24 things dissolved in water sorry a liquid i'll use water the amount of substance we drop dissolve in a volume of a liquid will give us the concentration but we knew that this n we have already studied this somewhere where we had mass over the molar mass calculation we used doing substitution you can replace this m over that in this equation so c which i'm supposed to have n there i replace with m over m small m over big m times v and this is also concentration when we have p over m we can also call the mass concentration some of the questions will come in this form, so let's take a look at it. One thing you're supposed to note is that the standard unit of the volume is a decimeter. A decimeter is equal to a thousand centimeter cube. A decimeter cube, one decimeter cube is equal to a thousand centimeter cube. So what happens is that if I give you something in centimeter cube and to change to decimeter cube, you divide by 1000. So on your screen, it's a 500 centimeter that I'm saying try and change it to a decimeter in decimeter cube. One aspect of this chemistry is that if the mass, your mass side is a little bit weaker in terms of percentage, decimals, oof, we'll have a little problem. But the concept, once you have the concept, you can put the formula down. You just have to substitute it into it. Let's take a pure example. Now, determine the concentration of 0.25 moles of sodium hydroxide dissolved in 1 dm cube. So I say determine what? Concentration. So we'll find your C is equal to N over V. So C is equal to N. I've given you the N which is the moose side here. Another way of also knowing your, vol your concentration is the mass by volume of solute in solution. The first I was telling you that you drop cubes of sugar. Yes, yeah, so you see the cubes and you drop it. But you can also use the mass, the weight. Let me use the word weight, which is easier. But you are looking at the mass side. If you can have the mass, if I have more mass than you, and I'm being dropped into the same amount of volume. Once you have more mass, logically you have more particles. That's why you are more. The quantity of thing you will be more than me. So once you have more something more in you than me, in terms of quantity of things. So the same sugar, if one has a higher mass and one has a lesser mass, and we put all this in the same amount of volume, the one with higher masses is going to be concentrated than the one with lower masses. So the formula we use for this is mass of solute in gram, then dm cube. Go back and look at this one. Here the unit is what? Mole over dm cube student confuse that then look at this one gram per dm cube so whenever i ask you gram per dm which letters are filled with liquids so that's the trick let's take a question this came wasi 2015 of deck 
question 3b. An aqueous solution of 2.0 dm cube contains 53.0 gram sodium trisocarbonate 4. Calculate the concentration in gram per dm cube, the mole per dm cube. They have just said one is in grams, that is in mass, one is in liters. Let's pick our values before we go to the next slide for the solution. So our data. We have a solution of what? Mass has been given as 53.0 gram. Our volume has been given at 2.0 dm cube. I wish the question had come in centimeter cubes and we have to change it. How do we solve it now? Now you need your gram. So in your mass concentration aspect, the first one is going to be what? A gram over dm cube. And the gram has been given as... So your C is something a G goes to. Then the G means what? Mass, which is M. And your dm cube means volume, which is dm cube. So if you put it together, we're going to have 53.0 chain over 2.0 dm cube. Let's see if you got. So our answer is going to be 26.5 gram per dm cube. Let's go back. The other one is mole. Once we say mole, is the amount of substance. So is there any amount of substance on your screen here that we can get or can calculate? Yes, there's a trick. It gave you a whole reaction of... You can use the molar mass approach of finding sodium triazocarbonate 4. calculate it or per the other approach that came in the exams once you have the molar concentration then you have the mass the mass of the concentration the molar mass we can also get the same answer so take your time look on your screen And this is your solution. Okay. So I said the mass of the concentration. Now let's go on to mass by mass percentage of solute in solution. Now sometimes you can also calculate the concentration by knowing the mass of the solution itself. Let's say if I put salt or sugar into water and I weigh it together and prior to that I had also weighed the sugar alone and I say sugar is x and the whole new thing is y if I want to find the portion of sugar amount in the solution it's going to be the sugar divided by the mass of the whole solution it's a percentage work so what is going to happen is that I want just to find out when we came together and I was an individual, what is my percentage within the large amount. So on your screen is the formula for mass of solute in grams all over mass of solution times 100. So I'm going to keep it in percentages. Why? Because these parts 
will cancel and you're going to keep it in percentages. 